Welcome to Summit's Online Encounter. Our mission is to provide locations where people like you can have life-changing experiences with God. This is one of those locations. We also gather each week as a church in the heart of St. Paul. As disciples of Christ, we're doing our best to be on mission, deliver hope, and champion this city. At any point in your journey, if you want to take the next steps, or you just want to stay in the loop with everything going on at Summit, just grab your phone and simply text the phrase, Be Known, to 651-360-2908. We will send you a short form. Please complete it so you can be known in our Summit family. There's always new opportunities to mention, so here's what's coming up soon. We hope you take advantage of these opportunities to grow in community and your own faith. One of the ways to grow your faith is through worship. Worship with our lives in serving and also worshiping Jesus with a song. We have pre-recorded music in our sanctuary to create a place for you to worship with us virtually. So focus in, give way to the space needed, and invest some time in worshiping Jesus.
that's important to following Jesus is studying scripture. As we study the Bible, we can have hope, find guidance, be corrected, and receive truth into our lives. Let's open up God's word and hear this week's message. Let me tell you a story. In the Upper East Side of Manhattan, a small part of an apartment building, there were different apartments all stacked together there was one that had a white door. Behind it was about a 500 square foot place that you could live. This apartment in the upper side of East Manhattan, this small little part of this crammed together 500 square foot apartment, it had a tenant and this tenant had gone mysteriously missing. The neighbors to the left and the right and across the hall uh, just only to have their curiosity more perked, notice the smells and the sounds and the strange noises coming from this door. They hadn't seen their neighbor, and so they did what any good neighbor would do, and they called their landlord. We hadn't seen you know, them go to work. We don't know where they are. We haven't heard from them. No one goes in and out. All we know is that there is something happening inside this apartment. The landlord calls the police. The police show up on the scene to, to try and find out what's going on inside of this apartment. And rather than breaking down the door, they actually cut a hole in the door to unlock it and then to legally uh, enter the apartment. And the first officer looks inside that small little hole. And what he sees changes everything. Roaming this 500-square-foot apartment in the Upper East Side of Manhattan is a Bengal tiger. This huge, massive tiger that you would see uh, at a zoo or chasing down a wildebeest in the jungle. What had happened, apparently, that this tenant had smuggled this tiny, baby, cute tiger cub and fed it. And fed it and it grew and it grew and it does what tigers do when they get hungry if there isn't food well let's just simply say that that owner that owner became food now that tiger is mentioned the name of the apartment complex the even the owner but the tiger the tiger's name is never really solidified it's never put in print. No one really knows what the tiger's name was. I mean, if it was a pet tiger and we name our cats and dogs, there's a good chance this tiger had a name. And this tiger's name, if you ask me, is just simply one word. Comparison. Comparison are these small little things we invite ourselves or we invite into ourselves our stories and they grow. it grows and grows into these big Things until it consumes our story. We looked at John uh, and we looked at the importance of story at Summit. We looked at this boy uh, having what's in his hand to give it or to keep it. What you keep in your hand when it comes to your story, what you're supposed to give away, it's the most it'll ever be. But what you give away to Christ in your story, it's the least it'll ever be. Jesus multiplies our story. 
and we talked about uh, just briefly about how we can write ourselves into someone else's story. And to, in, I guess in this moment, uh, I, I want to really focus you in on this simple truth. Stop comparing your story. We value your story, his story, our story, and you have to stop comparing yours. Let's go to the text in Genesis chapter 4. We read a famous story about Cain and Abel. And for the sake of time, I will just simply tell you much of the story. You had two brothers who had two different offerings, and they both brought them to God. And the brother looked at the other brother's offering and was envious or jealous because God accepted one offering and didn't the other. And the truth is, is those brothers had a moment in that space and time where decision had to be made. And Cain uh, compared his offering to Abel's. And this story of comparison surfaces so much so that we read in the first part of Genesis chapter 4 that Abel actually takes his brother's life. Now, we don't know what he used. You know, it's not like the Bible specifically spells out what weapon. We know maybe it was in a field. The text is clear about some of these details. It's like playing Clue. You know, it's, it's Colonel Mustard in the conservatory with the revolver. We've played the game. We know the weapon, the location, and the alleged murderer. But in this story, we might not know all those things. We do know Abel is, is um, you know, being attacked by his brother Cain. And what it killed Abel in my opinion, is comparison. Comparison in his brother's heart is what killed his brother. Comparison in Cain's heart is what kept Abel's heart from continuing to beat. It happens after disappointment. It happens when we're dealing with production or passion, with gifts and talents. When we see other people... Uh, in life or we see them virtually in our life and we're looking at their highlight reel and the things that they're doing great or the things that they've accomplished and we start to compare these things in our life it can actually negatively affect your story if you want to value story yes write yourself into someone's story but if you value story like we do around here if i can just tell you something i've learned from cain and abel is just this simple truth Stop comparing your story. Let's look to John 21. Jesus certainly deals with this. The last part of John 21, this is post-resurrection. Jesus reveals himself uh, to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel goes through it all, and he says, I'm going to go fishing. They say, we're going to go with you. They went out to the boat, but they caught Nothing. Jesus, as day is breaking, stands on the shore, and yet the disciples don't even know that it's Jesus. Jesus has a conversation with them. It finally clicks. They get out on land. They saw this charcoal fire that Jesus had stoked, and he's got fish laid down on it and bread, just like the boy with the bread and fish. And Jesus says, hey, Bring some of that fish that you just caught. So Simon, Peter went aboard, hauled in the net, 153 fish. And although there's so many, the nets are torn. This is going back to the original miracle that started this whole thing. Come have breakfast. And not one of the disciples dared to ask him. And Jesus, after they finished breakfast, asked Simon, Hey, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Ask him three times. And he says, well, feed my sheep, tend my lambs, feed my sheep. Now remember, this is the same guy that denied Christ three times. We get down to the end here. I love what John lets us in on. John 21, verse 20. Peter turns around and saw the disciple who Jesus loved most. Who's writing this? Historically, uh, the apostle John, or this disciple John, is writing this. Peter saw the disciple who Jesus loved most who leaned back against him during the supper. So who leaned back against Jesus during the Lord's Supper? It's John. John is saying to us, 
Peter turns around and sees the disciple who Jesus loved most, which is me. You can see even in the text, John's like, here's me, here's Peter. Here's where I rank, and here's where he ranks. You can see the comparison already back in full display, chapters and pages and years later, from two brothers in a field named Cain and Abel over an offering, and now two brothers on a shore over a meal. Comparison still exists. And Jesus says to them there, after is he is asked, what about this person? What about him? What, what about Peter? What about John? And Jesus said, if it's my will that he remains until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. So this spread out through all the disciples. And what I want to just remind you all here in this moment, as people who are gathering at the summit or here at the online encounter, when it comes to your story, stop comparing your story to someone else. Obedience and faithfulness, that's success. Completing what God has assigned you and gifted you to do is the story that you need to live in. It's not comparing or completing someone else's story. It's being faithful and obedient to the story that God has for you. The Holy Spirit has been asking me and, and is asking you and certainly declared through Christ, what's it to you? When it comes to story, when it comes to comparison, don't let it grow from such a small little cub into something so great that it consumes you, your time, your energy, the unity here at this church, and the mission that we have in this city. Do what Jesus did with those two brothers post-resurrection and just ask the question, what's it to me? Stop comparing your story and start living out the one that God has for you. To help you apply the truth found in scripture, we always like to ask three questions. What did you learn about God? What did you learn about yourself? And how are you going to apply what the Holy Spirit is speaking through scripture to your life? We hope that these questions help bring clarity for you. Thank you for being a part of our online encounter. Join us in person sometime as we gather as a church on Summit Avenue, or join us here virtually again next week. Let me just say, our city of St. Paul is absolutely amazing. I encourage you to check out all the history it has to offer. And you need to know Summit Church, this church has been a part of that history with so many amazing churches in our city. But speaking specifically about the people of Summit, well, we've been gathering here since 1932. And my hope is that this would be a rich history. It would be our forward legacy. History is a thing of the past, but legacy, it makes way you know, for the future. So the question I have for us is where are we going? Uh, that is a good question. Our vision is simple. It's really to see all of people and beyond living as disciples of Christ, people full of hope, uh, fully known, actively loving one another, living a spirit-led life. Our mission, it's also simple as well, to provide rhythm, location, opportunity for you to have a life-changing experience with God. Uh, you know, we all journey in our diversity to do these three things, become disciples of Jesus, deliver hope, and to champion our city. That's where we're going and that's what we're doing. So maybe a question for you is where are you going? You know, what are your next steps? I would encourage you to do this. Join one of our monthly expeditions. The expedition is a simple experience where you can find out more about who you are in Christ, who Summit Church is, what we do around here, and how you can maybe even, you know, play a part. It's less than two hours of your time uh, for the whole month. We also feed you amazing food and even provide child care. So the question is, where are you going? Hopefully to the expedition is my thought. We're all on a journey following Jesus, maybe together. We just might not be us without you. We'll see you at the summit.